guys, today we're in Dallas, Texas, one of the Hellcat capitals of the world. And if you're a Mopar fan, the scene down here, it is absolutely insane. But of course, with the good comes the bad. So many of these newer supercharged Dodges are getting stolen at an incredible rate. Most of them are never recovered, chopped up for parts, they're gone. Once in a while though, a lucky Hellcat survives and ends up here, and that's where I come in. Insurance Auto Auctions. It's home to wrecked, flooded, stolen cars of all shapes and sizes. It's where I buy my project cars and parts cars alike. Today we're after one thing and one thing only, Dodges. So you know I had to bring in the big dog. Herman, AKA Demonology, AKA Mr. Soul Snatcher himself. Hey man, I need you to teach me how to buy a car from the auction. If there's one thing in this world I'm qualified to teach, it's buying junk. As far as non-wrecked cars go, I think this one is the most interesting one we're gonna see today, and it's probably not for the best reason. This car I've actually seen before out on the streets and at the drag strip. If it's the car that I'm thinking about, the Intimidator, it is. Uh, it used to be a really, really fast car. It used to be an all-black car, but then I know it had this wrap done to it. I'm not the biggest fan of it, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> We're gonna leave that alone, it's about to fall off. If you buy this car, don't count on it making it with that. The interior Joker. looks good on it. You got clean seat. A lot of people are not fans of, of all of the trim and stuff, but you can tell that he really wanted to customize this car, whoever the Intimidator is. You guys know I'm not typically a fan of stuff like this. I don't like all the extra stuff. You may not expect this, but I actually kind of, just a little bit like this, it's not too, too bad. One thing I do know, these red door panels with the red lower pieces and the red uppers, they're like two grand. We just sold a set of those for insane money. As usual, you cannot go wrong with red seats in these cars. Absolutely beautiful. Let me know what you guys think. Too much? But Herman, what do we have going on down here? The glove box there, that driver knee panel, it's all ripped off. Is that how they're stealing these? <laughs> no, I don't think they're stealing them that way. But what I can tell you is that they took all of his go fast parts off of here. What's the deal with that? Is that where they keep tuners or something? I genuinely don't know. Yeah, that's where they keep the tuners. So that so the HP tuners will start right here. And then the rest of them, let's come around here and see what's under the hood. And you, uh, you said it was fast. You yeah, said I mean, it was fast, I've so. seen this car go down a drag strip and it, it was, was and it was pretty quick. Uh, but it's not quick anymore. I can't remember if they didn't have pictures of the underhood of this car where I just didn't look at them. We see a lot of theft cars here. That one there, that one there. They all have engines in them. And I suppose hindsight being 2020, you can tell that wheel gap is really, really large. I should have known something was up, but somehow this did catch me off guard. And not only that, it doesn't have a transmission in it either. Obviously no blower, no cylinder head. Why they did this instead of just pulling the entire drivetrain, I do not know. I see one other thing they left down there. That's an aftermarket pulley, right? Yeah, that looks like an ATI pulley on there. So it's definitely an aftermarket pulley on this car. I wonder if the block has a hole in it. I can't think of a good reason they wouldn't take the block. No, maybe they didn't have a lift. Maybe they were in a hurry when they stole this thing and just took what they could, though that doesn't explain well, the transmission. Yeah, they pretty much stripped it. I don't know why they left the block. As you guys have seen on this channel over and over, when we get a theft car at auction like this, they're usually recovered before this happens. Either that or it's an absolute bare frame. This is one of those weird in-between cars. They kind of half finished. Obviously that's a little disappointing, but there is some good to go around with this car. The brakes, the wheels, they all look good. The body's in phenomenal shape. Even if it's not your taste, there's no active damage, so you can't really complain too much. Everything that was done to this car that's subjective, I'll put it nicely, that can all be removed. I just looked in the back seat for the first time. Half of that's removed as well. It looks like we don't even have the full rear seat there. That lower section is completely gone and missing. Now on theft cars, you know I'm not typically the buyer. I'm looking for those heavy wrecks. I'm looking for something that I can get a good deal on. But one like this, it might work. It honestly might work. And this is why we bring the experts here. Then let's check for the fuel pump. <laughs> yeah, so generally with a with a with a high powered car like this, most guys will come in and they will try to steal the, the fuel pumps out of them. But the fuel pump is still intact in this particular car right here. So is that a it's unplugged though? Yeah, yeah, it's unplugged. I don't know why it's unplugged. That's weird. But it is unplugged. Now what's the go-to aftermarket fuel pump on this? Or is it a upgrade to a demon pump? What's the popular thing? You know, a lot of guys like to upgrade to a demon pump, a red eye pump, or either they go to a four pump. So it's a lot of lot of different things you can do to them. Also, guys like to add booster pumps to them. It's absolutely no secret whatsoever that I enjoy buying cars that are junk. We'll put it like that because I can't think of a better term. This 
qualifies this car as junk. While the body's good, while everything else is pretty good, though it is missing some pieces, I think this might be the perfect swap car. A lot of these theft cars, as you know, are going for thirty, forty thousand dollars because people are assuming there's nothing wrong with them. This one here, they already know from the jump that it has a major issue. I think because of that, the price may stay low. And I'll say if this thing goes under twenty grand, it's a solid buy, and I might be the one who takes advantage of that. This guy right here, it's over in a special section named Coming Attractions. From the outside, it looks like a pretty nice car. There's not much going on with it. When you get inside though, it has been through some things. We'll leave it at that. Look at that in the A pillar. You can see right through it. That's nuts. One important note, this Charger Hellcat was not listed as stolen. It looks like they may have attempted to steal it or worse, but I don't think they actually got it. Body wise, the car looks really nice. I see a couple dings down there, nothing major. The backside, absolutely perfect. It is missing half of the SRT badge, half off the front and back, that's kind of odd. Aftermarket diffuser, it has the standard issue, carbon exhaust tips, it's lacking a good color combo. Black on white, not my favorite, but it's not actively damaged. It's not clean, but it's not damaged. I give it a, I don't know, seven out of 10. What it's gonna come down to in this car is the engine bay. It's Pretty clean. There's more bullet holes there. I guess that's an entry. I don't know. Right there in the hood liner, that's an exit. You can see it right there, actually. That is pretty low. That's really low. I'm surprised it, oh my God, it did hit the engine. I've looked at a lot of cars at a lot of auctions. A lot of them with bullet holes. I've never seen that. That's absolutely wild. There's no way around it. This car got it bad. But from a rebuilding standpoint, I actually think it's going to be kind of easy, just like eating clean and fast with today's video sponsor, Factor. When I'm deep in the middle of a build and can't seem to find the time to do anything else, much less shop, cook, and clean, Factor's been an absolute game changer in making sure I can eat healthy quick. Whether you're too busy to cook or simply don't want to leave the garage, with Factor, skip the trip to the grocery store. And while you're at it, skip the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. You guys already know, I've been a long time user of HelloFresh who owns Factor. So naturally, Factor was the perfect fit to give me even more flexibility when it comes to meal time. With 34 chef prepared, dietitian approved weekly options, there's always something new to try. Enjoy meals for any time of the day with breakfast options like egg bites, smoothies, and more. Plus, replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 45 plus add-ons. Great decision, poor decision. If you want to free up more time to work on your project car or simply want to eat clean and quick, cost effectively, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code SCRAPLIFE50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Remember guys, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code SCRAPLIFE50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. I'm sure there's a body guy watching that's much more qualified to tell you how to fix that, but I assume you can just fix it. You won't have to replace the A-pillar section there. I didn't see it at first, but there is an actual hole in the dashboard, so you'll need to attend to that. Let's see. Let's play our best forensics here. Maybe that is the one that ultimately came out there. Everywhere I look in this thing, I'm just seeing more and more right there in the headliner, though I suppose we could have assumed that from the roof hole. I gotta say, this was pretty wild. We have seen a bunch of people on YouTube alone buy cars that are riddled with bullet holes and do pretty well on them. I already have the two door with the Demon. Maybe it's time for a four door. As always, of course, it's gonna depend what it goes for. I have no clue. If I had to throw a rough guess on it, 35 grand. It's gonna come down to if the people that are bidding on this online, the people that haven't got to look it over in person, if they can see exactly how bad this car is damaged. It wouldn't be real hard to look at this from afar and think it's a perfectly normal car with really light damage. And if that's the case, you know we're not gonna be able to buy it. But let's hope the other buyers are being smart that day and keep our fingers crossed. Now this thing here is the car I was most excited about today. My excitement has waned significantly and you guys are gonna understand why here in just a second. And tell me this car doesn't look like something you see on a dealership lot. Hey man, I love the color, red, right? It's it, beautiful, man. This, this car is nice. It's ready to go. It is really nice, and that's kind of the problem. It just looks like a better version of my Demon. The issue we have here, though, it's locked. We literally cannot do anything with this. We can't get inside. There's no wreck damage to speak of. It's a complete car. It is another theft car. There's nothing we can tell about this car at all. If you look at this car, they didn't do much to it. You have no broken windows on it, no broken sunroof. Uh, everything is intact. Even even when you look in there where the shifter is at. 
everything is intact. Now you guys might be wondering why this is a bad thing. Generally when you get a car that's not messed with, it's not wrecked, that's the one you want to buy. The problem I'm going to have is I thought this would be a good donor for my demon. I was hoping it was trashed, I was hoping they stole the engine out of it. I was hoping that there was going to be something about this car that made it go cheap, meaning I could buy it for my demon. Perfect red wide body panels, fender, front bumper. I could stick this thing right on my demon and it would be good to go. I mean, look at the rubber on the wheels. This, this car has a lot of tread on it. Look at the rims. You see no road rash. In the car world, saying something's too nice doesn't make any sense. I get that. But at Salvage Auction, you guys have heard me speak many times about how I want things to be hit in a strategic way. I need something to get the price down so I can buy it. As perfect as this car would be for our situation, there is absolutely zero chance I'm going to be able to buy this. I think we're going to go ahead and upsize it a little bit. Let's do a track hawk. Challengers are more than big enough for me. I don't need to get an SUV. But if I did, it wouldn't be that one. It'd be something that looks like this or that. Three track hawks in one place. One of the cars, yet again, is a theft. This car here is a heavy collision, and I do mean heavy. We'll get into that in just a second. And that one over there is yet another theft. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem that it went so well. The one idea that I do have running through my head, and it is a bad idea, I won't argue with you when you tell me that in the comments, is getting one of these to tow the demon around. I think it'd be pretty cool. We all know it's not the ideal tow machine. Even if we wanted a Hellcat powered something to tow, we just buy a TRX. But I don't think it's any secret at this point that I like to do things just a little differently. I suppose we'll hit these track hawks in order of ones I'm least likely to buy all the way up to the one that I can probably afford. Not off to a good start. Let's try the other side here. As far as the body goes, this black one, the theft car, it looks really good. Like the red wide body Challenger. Wheels, perfect. Everything looks solid. Red interior, check that out. That must be a Dallas thing. It's not as common to see that on the East Coast where I'm from. When you see a red interior one of these over there, it's actually pretty special. Just like the exterior, the interior, phenomenal shape. We have something down there, Nemesis Audio. I guess it has some kind of sound system. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This might be one of the cars here that we can actually start. Fingers crossed it's not missing an engine, not missing anything key. Fingers crossed I can actually pop the hood. There we go. JLT intake otherwise stock and like some of the other cars here just really clean i suppose it does make sense only 37,000 miles and the car does show it so far the only problem i can find with is that stuff right there guys stop putting caps on your lug nuts it looks weird herman i'm gonna let the expert do the honors you want to see if this thing will actually start up hey let's fire it up everything looks in play there is no damage that i can find other than some questionable choices about what they put on their lug nuts but <laughs> we don't want to talk about that Hey man, you and your luck nut fetish. Let's fire this sucker up, see what we got. Man, this is a good car. It sounds good for a yeah, Dodge, I'll yeah. give it that. <laughs> it sounds beautiful. Best I can tell, other than the intake, it's bone stock. The exhaust is really quiet. You yeah, just had not. that blower noise at the front. I like this one. This is gonna be money though. I mean it. This is $50,000 plus. 2019 Track Hawk, 37,000 miles. If this wasn't a salvage auction, what's it going for on a dealer lot? 80. 80, wow. People have been getting dangerously close to full-blown retail pricing on salvage cars, especially when they're nice like this. So needless to say, that one's out of the running for what we want to do. We're going to go ahead and skip over the obvious choice for just a second and check out one that's a little bit lighter of a wreck. It's still hit pretty good just off the jump. You see that passenger frame rail? That's going to be bent a little bit. You need some obvious pieces, but I still think with how much these cars are pulling new, this is going to be one expensive track hawk. I gotta say, from a color combo standpoint, I really dig the yellow Brembos on it. That looks awesome behind the black wheels on the white. Let's see the interior. Ugh. Yeah, I'm processing it here. It's taking a second. I personally hate gray interiors in almost all cases. Somehow though, this almost looks like a light silver. It's not the worst. I'll give it that and that's high praise for a gray interior coming from me. 
unlike the last one, we're not going to be able to get a mileage off it, but IAA.com lists the mileage as just over 20,000. So about half of the black one, the driver's side, the rear ends, it's all fine, though somebody did pull the Trackhawk badge off it. Factor that, I don't know, $50, $100 into your rebuild cost on that. The passenger side, it's good all the way to there. We have the obvious stuff, the fender, the hood, the front bumper, the front bumper beam. I'm not exactly sure how these cars are put together compared to, say, a Challenger. I haven't had any hands-on experience with this. If you look at the wheel there, it's cambered in, I don't know, negative 5, negative 10 degrees. Needless to say, there's some suspension damage. The fender liner, that's just been ripped out. This is all you have left of your passenger headlight, so you're definitely going to need one of those. The wiring for it did stay intact, which is nice. That'll save you a little bit of trouble. And it's all going to come down to how bad that frame rail is in there. And unfortunately, this hood, it is wedged shut, so we're not going to be able to get in there. That means we're going to have to do our best detective work from right here. Feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but if you look at that big U-shaped piece right there, I believe that's all bolt-on. When that front bumper beam got hit right there, you can see that it bent that passenger frame rail over that way just a tad. From a collision standpoint, this car is really not that bad. It's fairly light. It's not what I would call easy, but we'll give it a 4 out of 10. What really scares me with this, even if everything's right with the engine, even if it's fully intact, which by looking through there, it does look like it is, there's something very key right down there that's completely blown off. If we step away from that one and finally make our way over here to the one that got hit the worst, you'll see that this one has a little aluminum cooler right there. Anytime I'm buying a 6.2 Dodge Supercharged, no matter what it is, a Hellcat, a Trackhawk, a Demon, well, my Demon didn't have one of those, but it was missing a lot more. My number one requirement is that that cooler's intact and the lines on the bottom aren't blown off of it. That guy right there, that's the engine oil cooler. Effectively, if you started that car as it sits right now, you're going to have zero oil pressure. That motor in very short order is going to be toast. Now, there's no reason at all to suspect that car is ran after the wreck, after that oil cooler is ripped off. Last up on the Trackhawk list here, the one that by all metrics should be the worst, but it just so happens to be the one that I'm most interested in. This thing here got absolutely smacked. But as you guys just heard me say, the engine oil cooler is intact. We do have much bigger problems, and it's not going to do us any good if this thing isn't repairable. The engine, I can't tell if that's sitting crooked or not. I really can't. Well, I can tell you what, whoever had it drove the hell out of it. Because of the and filter? They, yeah, yeah, you can look how, how dirty the filter is. They hadn't cleaned the filter. And man, this came from a dusty land. But everything else looks good off in here. It just got in a bad wreck, that's all. It's nothing modded on, on the front of the engine. Everything looks all factory and stock. I think ultimately this car is going to fall somewhere that's just a little too far for me to want to rebuild it for my uses. I need something that's in between that and that. But you guys know 100% we're going to take a look at it for parts. As Herman just laid out, it's dirty, but it's all there and all stock except the JLT intake, which marks, I think, the third one we've seen here today. Just looking at this car square from the front, you can tell it has major issues. That driver's headlight is a solid foot above the passenger one. It is all jacked up. That wheel, it's facing that way. I'm not positive we have any straight wheels on this car. We're three out of four. Uh, okay, the driver rear, it looks good. I mean, I'm an optimist. I'll find the bright spots. Some more good, the whole rear end, the passenger side. Body-wise, it's all fine. We do have a little bit of damage there on the fender flare, but that's the absolute least of our concerns here. So, theoretically, if you were to want to fix this, rear suspension on the passenger side, front suspension on both sides, you're probably going to need a frame cut off a car like that. Firewall forward, you're going to need a ton. On a car like this, we obviously need to check the body gaps. Fender to A-pillar, very tight. Fender to door, somewhat loose but consistent for the most part. Door to door, tight but consistent. It doesn't look that bad as far as that goes interior red on white again man, what's up with all the red interiors down here hey, is that man, like the, the spec hey man the bloody guts man you gotta have it. for good reason the seat belts locked every airbag in this thing is blown it cracked the windshield up there otherwise the interior is fairly clean but this car it's it's rough it's gonna need a lot for what i may or may not want to do with one of these things that car it's not going to cut it for the parts business that car can make a lot of sense. Oil cooler intact, damaged hard enough where it's going to be a pain for somebody to fix it. This guy here runs at auction in a few weeks, and I'm definitely going to have my eye on it. I don't know. We'll put 
25 grand on it, maybe a little more. Retail value becomes so much less important on a car like this when it's wrecked to this magnitude. It's really about how much parts value is in it. At this point, I've lost track of how many theft cars we've seen. I hear a siren in the background right now. Another Hellcat probably just got stolen, but we're not here to worry about that. We're here to talk about this one. We got ourselves a white one, matte black hood. It's one of my favorite basic color combos, unlike that red one there. Whoever stole this one didn't take care of the wheels. They had a little more fun with it. Now for everything that was wrong with that one, for everything on that car that's gonna keep it cheap, I think it's the complete opposite on this. The body, it's clean. It actually looks like it's nice and lowered too. The only damage I can spot whatsoever on this is the sunroof and it's not damaged, it just got left open for some reason. Because of that, I'm positive this car doesn't have any power or they would have closed it here at the auction. But look at that interior, white on red, always a winner. This is the same exact interior as that car over there, except it doesn't have the extras. It is automatic, that's not much fun. Let's see what's under the hood. All right, that's clean. That's very, very clean. It's dirty, but it's clean. One of the most common mods you find on these cars, the carbon fiber intake by Lake Maker. This car, other than that sunroof being left open, once again, looks like a car that you could see on the dealer lot. When I talk about theft, Hellcats pulling a ton of money and us not being able to buy them for obvious reasons, this car, that car, it's exactly what I'm talking about. I just happened to pop my head in here and see that. Not that, not that. We're gonna get back here and check those out later. That right there. I don't think this is gonna surprise a single one of you at this point. This one right here, it's also a theft car. Difference is with this one. It didn't get fully wrecked. It didn't get recovered in good condition. I think they ran this thing to the ragged edge. So give me the scenario here. What's happening with this? How did this happen? What's happening with this is that this car got into a pursuit, just in my opinion. The tire got blown out, spiked or curb and he just kept making it run until it couldn't go anymore i Not gotta on. say it's almost impressive i haven't seen a wheel ground down this far ever i don't have a tape measure handy but this looks 18 inch wheel i think they're supposed to be 20s the tire is flailing around beating into this fender i feel like if this happened during even a reasonable hour at all there's got to be a video of this somewhere, right? We are inside. It is very dark in here, but you can see an axle that's hanging down as well. So I'm guessing during the end of this pursuit where things really went south, that wheel just yeah, the wheel just folded. started the rip off. Exactly. Yeah. On the inside, black Alcantara, really nice condition. This car doesn't start, doesn't even have keys, but I have to imagine this is really low mileage. Oh, we're missing a little bit of stuff too. In a situation like this, where somebody didn't steal the thing, park it somewhere, and then have time to strip it, I have to guess that the possible ex-owner of this car got notified when they found the thing and came and got his aftermarket intake. That's the only thing that makes sense whatsoever. If you're into the Dodge stuff, you probably already know that the Durango Hellcats, they're special, they're rare, therefore they're expensive. For as dramatic as this looks, you have some suspension damage, you obviously need a wheel. Fender, maybe a front bumper. The tabs aren't even really bad. You can probably fix that. You don't even need many parts to fix this thing. The only reason this got total is because it was a theft. Guys, we've been here for a couple hours now. We looked at a lot of expensive cars, but now that brings me to one of my personal favorites. The old junk, you know I'm always drawn to it, a Magnum SRT8. You gotta have it, man. Love it. Everything about it. Everything? It's, it's man, it's an SRT8. To it's be fine. clear. You love everything about this car. There's nothing that sticks out to you as maybe not the best. Well, you pointed out some things to me when I first walked up to it. It doesn't have brakes. Man, we don't need brakes. All we need is the gas. We're going fast. We have ourselves a carbon fiber hood here covering up this beautiful... <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't call that beautiful. It's an old 6.1 Hemi. It's not beautiful. Actually, they can make somewhat power, but this is a, this is a fun car to have. They already came with the fenders flared on them before any fender flared car. You can slam them, drop them, put all type of sound system in the back. So it's cheap, it's cool. I have a feeling this is the one that me and you were gonna be fighting on. <laughs> I truly think one of us after seeing this is gonna buy it because it can't go for much money. It just can't. No. Oh, if I didn't mention it, it's a flood car. No brakes whatsoever. Fiberglass replacement panels, a nasty carbon fiber hood. If we're being honest, this car does not have a lot going for it which is why I love it. Look what you got here, red stitching. Now that's something that <laughs> could sell me on a car, but when the rest of the seat looks like 
that. Hey, don't look at the red stitching. I don't look know. I don't know that red stitching is going to make up for it. I'm not going to ruin Herman's surprise. I'm going to let him break what he bought. But we've already acquired a car down here this morning. And I had the fortune of sitting in some old Dodge interior. Absolutely not. Terrible. Horrible. Jokes aside, I don't know a lot about these cars. I do think they're cool when they're in decent shape. And I do think a wagon like this, a big, massive wagon. For a project car, say maybe an LS swap, I think it'd be pretty awesome. Man, this is going to be an awesome car no matter what you do it. You're going to take it and you're going to wrap it. Trojan Magnum Gold. Now we're talking. I mean, that sounds, Gold and sounds black. a good idea. Gold and black, brother. I'll say it now. If this car goes under three grand, I'll buy it. If it's above three grand, I'm going to have to think long and hard. But with that said, I think we've about done it here. We've looked at a lot of nice Mopars today. Some of them I want to buy. Some of them I definitely cannot buy. On my list, that one right there and that one right there. Those are the two that I'm most interested in, primarily because they're great project cars and they're definitely going to be cheap-ish. Anything you see today that has tempted you to spend your money other than my Magnum over there? <laughs> No, man, uh, you know, I, I like that one, but you told me that, that was out of the ballpark. This one here is beat up, but this one here, I think, is the one that I would spend my money on. I would love to do a track haul. I got to say, I'm excited for these cars to actually come up at auction and try to buy a couple of them, ship them back east, and add them to the collection of shit dodges that I already have. Hey, man, peace. See you on the track.